Super Jam, everyone! The main thing at, at Bonnaroo, when you get on that stage and you see so many people, you know, you just look out and they look happy. That's, that's my high. That's my high. You know, just, they... <sighs> Everybody on the way here was saying, this is what, you know, this is one of the great ones. And it is. That's the, that's the impression I got. You know, the crowd were obviously, you know, real music fans. When you see pictures of Bonnaroo, that is what Bonnaroo is. Bright-eyed, open, kind of generous, <laughs> tanned, <laughs> um, free people. There's more freedom. My kids can get freer and turn up in the middle of a field in a way they can't, you know, in the local club. Just, you know, them beneath the canopy of God, so they're just going. Oh, that's what I'm talking about there, Bonnaroo, baby. Turn up. Bonnaroo! It's the 15th anniversary of Bonnaroo. We're extremely excited. It's uh, almost unbelievable. <laughs> we knew we wanted to be in music, but we were just coming out of college. We didn't know what we wanted that to be. Superfly was a small concert promoter in New Orleans, and we were doing all sorts of different venues, everything from theaters and clubs to riverboats. Myself, my partners, we were you know, huge music fans, very passionate about live experience, very passionate about um, you know, bands that were connecting with uh, their audiences in a deep way. We brought those different elements together with the idea of let's create almost a European style, American national rock festival. In an amazing 18 days, we had sold 60,000 tickets. We had to stop ticket sales because we hadn't properly completed our site planning. We weren't absolutely sure how many people we could camp. At the time, it was sort of the bands that were I'm in the post-Grateful Dead, post-Fish world, um, that were starting to kind of coalesce around this kind of like improvisational rock scene. We felt from before we were there, we felt like it was like more of a jam band, hippie vibe or something, you know? And we walked away with um, um, just a, a completely different um, idea of what it, what it was. It's probably the model of what I think all, um, all festivals are, are trying to do. We started kind of opening up, and you know, it was also simultaneous with Napster, um, iPod, which was starting. So the way that people were listening to music was starting to really change. It was less format driven, and our musical interests were kind of all over the map. Right? We, love, we love great music. Bonnaroo started branching out into more rock music and diversifying. And it's definitely become more diverse and cooler in that way. You see Dion Word and Skrillex and, you know, all these people in one place, Beck and Rollins, you know, watching your set. How's it going, Bonnaroo? We are Ween from New Hope, Pennsylvania. We're able to attract really the top class, world class artists and, and all the new emerging artists who are here to sort of break through and go to the next level. It was my morning jacket. I mean, they've really kind of grown up with Bonnaroo, which was really fun to watch. I remember the first year they played, I mean, it was probably to like 500 people. At that time, they were like total headbangers. Like all of them were just going nuts, had all the long hair, and it was, it was such an amazing experience to see. And, you know, watching them grow over the years was amazing. And to now, they, you know, put on some of the most classic performances in Bonnaroo history. <laughs>
saw, oh my God, we saw Jamie FX. The sun was just right. It was like coming through the, the tent and I was like looking back at the audience and they had like this golden shine and kind of some extreme shadows going on and then people were spraying mist. So there was like mist going and like bronzed skin and people like, yeah! And just like this really classy music. And oh man, it was, it was dope. It was one of my favorite moments of the festival for sure. Spring scene, which was insane. All of a sudden, Springsteen just cuts into Santa Claus is coming to town. What the fuck is happening? Santa Claus is coming to town in the middle of a three-hour set of Bonnaroo. And Springsteen came in on a horse, too. In 2004, at the end, we had uh, William Hung come out and sing She Bangs from the, the middle of Santa Roo with like 20,000 people around him, and it was just so epic and ridiculous. <laughs> I saw Chris Rock open for Metallica and then introduce them on the main stage which is insane. I saw the Beastie Boys' last performance. This one time I was walking around with a lot of comedians. One of them was Brian Posehn. And we were watching Pearl Jam. It was a Pearl Jam year. As we're sitting there watching, kind of out with the, uh, with the actual crowd, not over in the artist area, I see like 15 glow sticks just on the ground, like a treasure. And so I walked up and I reached down to grab the glow sticks. And an inch away, Somebody had a rope tied to it that I didn't see and just yanks the glow sticks. Like, it's just this prank. Everybody was exploding in laughter, and then they threw the glow sticks back out, waiting for their next sucker. And Brian Posehn walked up to it and goes, steps on the rope, grabs it, rips it out of the guy's hands, and then just throws it into the crowd. And we celebrated. Oh, it was such a great moment. The Super Jam is something that we started in New Orleans really at the very beginning of Superfly. And the idea of it was to bring different players from different bands together. Throughout the years, we've had some amazing collaborations from Dan Auerbach uh, from the Black Keys doing something with Dr. John. Uh, one year we had John Paul Jones of Led Zeppelin with Questlove from The Roots. It's just this amazing opportunity to do these really cool collaborations. Just creating these moments that are these ephemeral things that can only happen once is, is special. Last year, I played um, Super Jam stage, played like a Joe Cocker song or something. It was fun. I like not knowing what's going on. There's all these great musicians on stage, and they're all just, you know, they're all just sl slaying it, and I'm just kind of swimming along, seeing what happens, you know. We wanted to kind of just keep adding things and making it better. It's one of the things that we kind of pride ourselves on with our festivals is we we really never just sit and say, okay, it worked, let's just do it again and again and again. Like every year we try and make things different and create new things. We just wanted to build an event that we wanted to go to. And while I love music, I don't want to watch 17 hours in a row of it, right? I want to go take in a movie. I want to go see a great comedy set. I might want to do yoga in the morning or take meditation classes. Welcome to Bonnaroo Comedy Big Top. I'm out here to let you guys know about a couple rules. Yeah, the comedy tent uh, from the very first year was, it was just a, a huge hit you know, something that's become a hallmark of the festival. During the comedy set, John Hyam came on stage and we started throwing gummy bears into uh, Zach Galifianakis' mouth, which was apparently a, a fantasy that he had. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when I saw them side stage, I thought, hey, I want a bit of that. You know, I, had, I got my jar of gummy bears and uh, I, I managed to get John on stage and Richard had a, you know, the drum roll. I caught one second, second time. The two Sarahs in our band, I think they, that just made their day. I'm a, I'm a huge metal fan and Slayer just, you know, was incredible. And, you, you know, I, of course, I knew Slayer would be great, but I uh, was just so proud to see the Bonnaroo fans completely embrace it. People were going nuts. <laughs> but I think that's one of the things that's been great with Bonnaroo. The fans are really so open there. Feels like all the fucking lads just having a great time. We um, just went around the festival uh, the day before we played in fancy dress, and it was good because like we didn't we don't we don't get to go out out front of the festival like that much anymore because it's just a bit hectic. So 
um, we got to go and experience the festival in the same way that everyone experienced the festival. And it was wicked, it was really fun. Went on water slides and got on the top of RVs and gave a lot of people a lot of high fives, you know, it was great. I loved it. I think that the festival really starts to shine when the sun starts going down because you get that beautiful golden hour and people start settling, it starts cooling off. Excitement starts to build for some of the larger acts and you know things get a little crazier. People's attitudes change, it gets darker, a little bit more introspective, then you start to see all the visuals, installations, and the calliope stage. They're like burners. Yeah, they're just a bunch of art weirdos doing weird pop-up stuff. They made a gigantic uh, tractor-sized version of a VW Beetle and uh, we rode around in that and it was towing a trailer with a huge sound system. It's pretty awesome. People who are coming here are coming from all over the country, and there's there's a whole sort of journey around that, around preparing for it, around you know organizing with your friends, around coming here, setting up, and then living in the elements. You definitely want to be here if you're here, and it turns into an endurance thing, but it's really fueled by people's curiosity and passion, and, and the fact that they're like, I'm here, so I'm just going to be here. That's a nice thing to surrender to. Not throwing any other festival under the bus, but like there's no like, like hey, I got you know four tickets to blah 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 city festival. Who wants to roll in and check out whatever? It's a camping festival, and Bonnaroo just has that that spirit when you're there of like everyone's sort of you know together um, and everyone's high fiving. I like this festival because it's all. It seems more like just down home and family, and I'm a southerner. I remember going to the park, going to my concerts with my mom um, as a kid, you know, barefoot running around, so it's cool to see younger people get turned on the music, sleep fresh. Because we're down here in Tennessee, people like to talk, you know, people really like to get into a conversation, and if you can come down to that level, everybody's got a lot of time for you. That's a real bonus. You can only get that in the South, brother. I think there's a lot of pretense that gets dropped, um, or at least, you know, gets dropped a few notches for people. I find a lot of people from all different genres hanging out, different types of people mixing together, and I think it helps people in a way. This is my 10th anniversary of playing Bonnaroo. Uh, in 2005, I did, I did my first Bonnaroo, and I've played five since. Um, and yeah, in a world that is like, not sound like a geezer, but like everything's shifting so much with how people get content and enjoy things, like this thing just hasn't changed. 15 years of magic is gonna be our, our tagline this year. It's like another milestone in time. You know, Bonnaroo's uh, becoming an adult. You know, really excited to make it the biggest and best celebration that we've done yet.